Hey, what's up champions? This is Neil with Neil Reyes Ministries. Today I want to talk with you about the importance of hearing a sure word from God. What do I mean by that? Well, oftentimes we're faced with big decisions that we need to make. And when we make those decisions, we don't want to be making them outside of the counsel of God. Well, we're going to talk about that today. Get ready. Hey, what's up, Champions? This is Neil with Neil Reyes Ministries, and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Walk. Today's topic that we're speaking about is called a sure word from God. Again, the topic that we're speaking about today is a sure word from God. I want to open up in prayer, and then we're going to get, jump right into the word. Father God, I come before you, Lord, and thank you for everyone who's listening or watching to this teaching today. No matter when they connect with this teaching, Lord, I believe that it's going to bring a spoken word in due season for their lives. And Lord, as I speak today, I ask that the words that come out of my mouth are all of you, Lord, and none of me. Lord, I exalt you as Jehovah Shema over this teaching, that you're the Lord God who's here, and you're the Lord God who's right there with the people who are listening or watching. You're with them in their everyday lives. I thank you that your presence is known, that it's felt, and that it's sensed that they know that they know that they know that you're there. And even if they can't feel it through an emotion, they know it through the sure promise of your word that you would never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, we invite you to be part of our everyday lives. We invite you to, into every decision that we need to make, into every aspect of our lives. Lord, we invite you to come take your place on the throne that's your rightful place as our king. As we speak today, Lord, I'm believing that you will give us wisdom to see the end from the beginning and all that we do, all that we touch, and all that we're a part of. We thank you for your wisdom and your guidance, and we thank you for clarity today as we approach the big decisions in life. Lord, we worship you and we praise you, holy name. We praise you, Father, for you are good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, today's topic that we're speaking about is called a sure word from God. What do I mean by that? Well, many people often have to make big decisions in life. And whether if it's a big decision that's forced upon you to make, or if it's a big decision that you're making on your own, maybe you have something before you like whether or not you should be making a move, switching jobs, something big like that, something that can be life altering. Maybe for you it's whether or not to say yes to the person who's asked you to marry them. And maybe you sense that that's going to come. Or maybe if you're the guy, I'm traditional, maybe if you're the guy, you're starting to sense about whether or not you want to ask this girl if you want to marry her, whatever your decision is. When we make decisions in life that can be life-altering, lifelong decisions or life-altering decisions, we do not want to make those decisions apart from the counsel of God. Psalms 1-1 tells us that we're to seek not the counsel of the ungodly. When we have large decisions in life to make, these are what I would call weighty decisions. These are decisions that are significant or can significantly impact life. We never want to make those decisions outside or apart or separated from the counsel of God. Making decisions with God is so important. In fact, I will tell you that as believers and as people, as His children, we should include God into all, not some, but all of our decisions. There are people who are having life-altering decisions in front of them, and they need to know the importance of having a sure word from God. This is significant. 
In fact, I will tell you that where I got this word from, and it just went off like a, it went off like lightning inside of me when I heard it. It was actually from one of my pastors. You know, I'm a traveling minister, and as a traveling minister, I travel around and speak at many different venues, many different events, many different churches, and we have our daily program and videos that come out every day of the week, Monday through Friday. But when I'm at home, I attend a church, and I have a pastor as well. I have a pastor and his wife. My pastors are pastors George and Terry Pearsons from Eagle Mountain International Church, EMIC. And one of the things that I heard Pastor Terry mention in the past is that there are times where you must have a sure word from God. Now, that's all the time. But when you're faced with large decisions in life, you'd better have a sure word from God. When I heard her say that, that went off like lightning in me. I mean, it went off like firecrackers on the inside because I knew the weightiness of those words but also in going through and experiencing life. I've made many moves with my family, and I'm going to tell you I understand the significance of that. If you're finding yourself in a situation today where God has delivered a word to you, then you need to honor that word at all costs. It doesn't matter how much it's going to cost. It doesn't matter how far you have to move. It doesn't matter who you have to leave behind. It doesn't matter how comfortable your current circumstance or position is. If God has called you out of something, or if He's called you to something, then you have to answer that with a yes. And you don't do it with grumbling, and you don't do it with complaining. Isaiah 119 tells us that if we are willing and obedient, willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. You have to have a sure word from God. And when God gives you a word, let's say, for example, you're approaching a decision. You'd better have a sure word from God before you just do that. So many people in life decide to make plans and then afterward ask God to bless the plan. That's kind of like eating a meal and then praying over it after you're done. You know, you need to pray over that meal before you eat it to cover anything that could be harmful for you in that meal. When we submit our plans to God, we're never to make a decision or make a plan and then ask God on the backside to please bless it. We're to seek His counsel in the foreground. We're in the forefront. We're to ask Him before we make that decision. And if you continually walk in the counsel of God, you'll have that wisdom before you before you ever encounter the time you need to make the decision. You know, God tells us in His Word that the Holy Spirit would lead and guide us in all truth. Not some truth, not most truth, not partial truth, but all truth. But we have to walk continually with Him so that we're in the, living in the continual counsel of God. Now, for some of you, this is different. You don't include Him in the little things. You only include Him in the big things. For others, you haven't even been including Him in the big things, and life may have been turning out okay, and, may, and that's called grace if it is. But if it's not turning out okay, you need to include Him in all things, and especially the big things. You've got to start with that. But what I will tell you is, what about for the person who they prayed and sought the counsel of God, they got the answer, and now they are made the decision and are walking it out, but life is not as smooth as what they're hoping it will be. I will share this with you. When you make decisions based on the Word and counsel of God, the devil will try to move in on your emotions and he will try to get you to move off of the decision you've made. He will try to get you to move off of the commitment you've made. He will get you to try to move off of that word that you received from the Lord, that promise you received from God by pressuring you with your emotions. And the devil's a nasty little cuss, but he's very cunning. So he will always attack you one of two ways. He'll either attack you directly or he'll attack you indirectly. If you've made a decision and you're walking it out and maybe it doesn't seem as easy as it should have been. And sometimes we hear erroneous childlike teachings from Christians that aren't quite right where they say, if it's God, it's always easy. If it's God, it's always smooth. And that is not true at all. You want an example of that? I'll give you an example. Jesus himself, Jesus himself, when he lived here on this earth, 
He had an assignment on his life that he was to be our blameless propitiation, our payment for sin. But even as he's facing the late hours before his crucifixion, he even went before the Lord and asked that if this could be passed from him, that it would. But that not his will, but God's will be done. And it tells us in the word that he was underneath such significant pressure that the man sweat blood. Jesus as a man was underneath so much pressure that he sweat blood. Are you going to tell me that that was smooth? Are you going to tell me that that was easy? That was not smooth and that was not easy. But he carried out his assignment without complaining and without grumbling. Because remember, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. There are times where when we've made decisions and we know it was based on the counsel of God, after we've made that decision and we're walking it out, the devil will try to move in on that and get you to go back on the decision you made. He'll try to turn around and go get you to go back on the decision by pressuring you with emotions. We're never to be led by our emotions. We're never to be guided by our emotions. If your emotions are speaking to you today, sometimes you just have to take authority and you've got to tell your emotions to shut up. You've got to tell them to be quiet. That may sound funny to you, but remember, you're a three-part being. You're a spirit man. That's who you are. You're a spirit that has a soul. You're not a soul. You have a soul. You're a spirit that has a soul and you live in a body. This is your earth suit. What is your soul though? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And when the devil attacks you, he attacks you in the realm of your soul. He can try to attack you on the realm of your body too. And sometimes we have spiritual attacks. We're like, oh, he's attacking us in the spiritual realm. It is a spiritual attack, but it's in the area of your senses, of your mind, your thoughts, your will, your choices, or your decisions, and your emotions, your feelings. The enemy will try to apply pressure to you in the area of your soul, your emotions, and he'll try to get you to move off of that thing that God directed you to do. But I'm going to encourage you that if God has given you a word, you hang in on that thing. You don't let go. Picture it like riding a bull. You may not know much about bull riding, but if you've ever watched the video on it, there are these great big powerful animals and they're bucking like crazy. They're bucking and they're kicking and they're trying to launch that rider off of them. How do those riders hang on? They've got to dig their heels in and they've got to try to ride that thing out. You've got to ride that thing out. And no matter what kind of pressure you're under, no matter how you feel you're being jerked around or kicked around, you've got to dig in. And you dig in on the sureness of God's word that he's given you. That's why when we make large decisions, we can't do it outside of the counsel of God. We have to have a sure word from God. I want to take you to some scripture today so I can give you some scripture that you can stand on as you're making these large decisions. This is an evergreen teaching, meaning that this is always applicable. And whether it doesn't matter when you connect, it doesn't matter if this is the one day old, if it's coming out on the day, or if it's 10 or 15 or 20 years old, it will always be relevant. When you have a big decision to make, or if you've already made a big decision, you'd better have a sure word from God. You need to know that you know that you know that God's word is true and he has something for you. I want to take you to our first scripture today. And all the scriptures I'm reading you today are out of the MEV. That's the modern English versions, what we're reading out of today. The first one I want to take you to is Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 14. So Jeremiah 29, verses 10 through 14, let's read. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans for peace and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you shall call upon me, and you shall come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all of your heart. I will be found by you, says the Lord. Praise God, that is a good word right there. God tells us that we shall seek Him and find Him when we seek Him with all, not some, 
not most, not 25%, not 99%, but when we seek Him with all of our heart. As believers, we cannot be lukewarm. You can't have one foot in and one foot out. The Bible tells us in the book of James that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. One day he's up, the next day he's down. One day he's in, the next day he's out. He's all over the place. And he's like sand or he's like waves that just get tossed here and there by the wind. They don't control their direction. The direction's uh, guided by other things. That's my timer, but I'm going to tell my timer to be quiet for a minute because I'm not done teaching. <laughs> we got more ground to cover here. God's flowing today. This was designed to be a little bit shorter of a teaching, but I feel God flowing and we're going to roll with it. Praise God. Hopefully you're hanging in there with us. You're not to be led by your emotions. You're to know that you know inside the counsel of God that you've got a sure word from God, something that you can bank on. And if someone says, well, I haven't heard, how do you talk? How are you? How do you mean, Neil? How do you mean? Am I, I've never heard an audible voice. I'm not talking about hearing an audible voice. How do you know when it's from God? Because there's a peace inside. The Bible tells us that out of the, a man's mind, a way may seem right, but in the end, it can lead to death. We're not to be led by our emotions. We're to be led by our spirit. Our spirit will be confirmed with the Holy Spirit by a spirit of peace. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 7 that they, we have a peace that transcends and surpasses all understanding. Meaning that there's times where when things seem like it's real smooth and there's times where it doesn't. But let me give you a better way of doing it, a clearer way of understanding it. There will be times in life that in your mind it might make perfect sense. It's a great job offer. It's more money than they've ever offered you. The benefits are fantastic. But while it makes sense in your mind, inside, there's no peace. In fact, another way of saying it is that there's an absence of peace. An absence of peace. And instead, you have turmoil and uncertainty. And if you have turmoil or uncertainty operating in your life, you'd better get that right quick. And if you've already made the decision and you're flooded with turmoil or uncertainty inside, you get that right by repenting to God. You ask for forgiveness and get that ready quick. You know, if you go back to the fall in the garden, the problem with the fall in the garden, most people think it was because they made a bad decision, that Adam and Eve made a bad decision, and they partook of the fruit of the tree of good of knowledge of good and evil, and it was a it violated God's word. That's true. That did. That started off with a really bad decision. And they already had God's counsel in that situation. And that was a verbal voice that he said. He said, Don't eat from this tree. But they ignored that. But do you want to know what really got him in trouble? What really got him in trouble wasn't that they succumbed to the temptation. What really, really messed that thing up was how they approached repentance. Oh man, I just heard fireworks go off in people. <laughs> I felt the tug in the spirit. I'm not justifying what they did is okay. It was not okay. They had a clear word from God not to do that thing. But what got them in trouble, significant trouble, was the way they approach repentance. How did they approach repentance? They didn't. They didn't approach repentance. They didn't ask God for forgive, to forgive them. They messed up on that thing significantly. And what I'm telling you is that if you've messed up in life, that happens. You can't just continue to make poor decision after poor decision or bad decision after bad decision and just say, oh, grace has got me covered. God's going to take care of it. That's a false grace. That's a hyper sense of grace, a false sense of grace where you're saying that, oh, I can just do whatever I want and live in sin and God's got me covered. That's a false sense of grace. Grace is not the coverage to cover you no matter what bad decision you make. While yet grace does that, grace is the power to move away from sin and overcome the power of sin. That is what grace is. Grace is the supernatural of power and authority God has given you as a believer to overcome sin. That is what grace is. And yet God covers us with His grace and He blesses us because He loves us. But you have to know that you know that you know 
that God is in your decisions. And when God gives you a word, you follow it no matter what. It doesn't matter what it costs. It doesn't matter what it's going to cost you. It doesn't matter how far away you have to move, who you're going to leave behind, how comfortable you currently are. If God tells you to do something, it's because He knows the plans that He has for you. They're plans to prosper you and to grow you and to increase you and bless you with more. John 10.10 10 tells us that the Lord, He tells us the character of the devil and the Lord. We cover this all the time, regularly it seems like. The devil comes like a thief and he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus came that you might have life and have it to its fullest, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Lean into the counsel of God. Seek the counsel of God and do so with your whole heart. I want to take you to our next scripture, and this is out of Jeremiah 10, 23, out of the MEV. It says, O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his steps. I'm going to say it again. O Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his steps, meaning that it's not man who directs himself. It's God who directs our steps. But God can only direct our steps when we invite Him to be part of the process. Remember our opening prayer? We invited God into every aspect of our everyday lives and we invited Him to be part of the process. You've got to have the counsel of God, not man's counsel. Now, sometimes we get God's counsel through man, but you've got to have God's counsel. Earlier, I talked about how the devil tries to attack, that sometimes it's direct and sometimes it's indirect. He'll try to get you to move directly on your emotions, but sometimes he'll try to get you to move through the emotions of someone else like your spouse when you guys have already committed to a decision and you know that you know that you know what God's word says, but the devil will come in and try to steal that word and he'll try to do it by moving or pressuring you with your emotions. You can't be a double-minded man blown from here to there by every direction of the wind. If the wind's blowing this direction, you're blowing this way. If the wind changes direction, blowing this way, you're blowing this way. You can't be that double-minded man, unstable in all your ways. I want to take you to another scripture, and this is out of Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your paths. This is so significant. This is another verse that's telling us to trust in the Lord with some of your heart. No, it didn't say that. It said trust in the Lord with all of your heart. All. All means all of your heart. All of your life. All of your heart. You have to trust the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is a powerful scripture. I have a couple more that I want to read you here. These are the last two and then we'll close. The first one is Psalms 32, 8, and it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye on you. I'm going to read that again. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye on you. Man, that's a powerful word right there. He's saying, I will instruct you. I will guide you. I will instruct you and teach you. Meaning it's not just telling you what to do, but it's teaching you what and why to do it. There's teaching with instruction. I will instruct you and teach you in the direction or the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye on you meaning He's watching us. And as He's watching every step we make, His eye is on us. And He's instructing us and teaching us and giving us sure counsel exactly on what we should do because His eye is on us. But we will always have a choice to either listen or ignore. To listen or ignore. You need to listen. <laughs> you need to lean in to the instruction of God. And our closing scripture that we have is out of John 8, 32. And it says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. I'm going to read that again. You shall know the truth, and the truth 
shall set you free. Praise God, praise God, what a powerful word. You know, earlier we said that it tells us in God's Word that the Holy Spirit would lead and guide us in all truth. God also told us in Psalms 32, 8 that He would counsel us. The Holy Spirit is called our great comforter or counselor, and He will lead and guide us in all truth. And John 8, 32 says that you shall know the truth. It didn't say you might know the truth or I hope you know the truth. It said you shall this is like a decree from God. This is a strong and sure-footed instruction. You shall, you will know the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free or will set you free. Praise God. That's a powerful word today. Guys, I pray that you got something out of this teaching today. If you're approaching a time where you have a significant decision before you, don't ever be moved by pressure. Don't ever allow pressure to move you to hurry up and make a decision. No matter what they're telling you, don't ever, ever be led by pressure. The devil pressure is always from the enemy. And the devil will try to squeeze you with pressure to elicit an emotional response from you. Because he knows that if he can elicit an emotional response from you or get you to move based on your emotions... Those emotions can lead you outside of the counsel of God and outside of His perfect will for your life. If you've made that decision, all you need is one conversation with God. We had a video on that earlier this week that talked about it, talking about communicating with God. You are just one conversation away from God to correct the things within your life. If you've messed up, you ask Him for forgiveness. You tell Him you're sorry and you be quick to repent. And if you've already made a decision based on the counsel of God and you're feeling pressure around you all aside to move, don't be moved or led by the pressure. You hook yourself in. You dig your heels into the Word of God. You dig yourselves into that promise. And you know that you know that you know that you're doing it. And you ride that thing out. And you don't move to the right or to the left unless He tells you. You keep your eyes fixed, rooted, fixed on Him. Guys, I pray that this teaching blessed you today. As always, we want to remind you to swing by our website. You can find us at neilreyes.com. For any and all things related to Neil Reyes or Neil Reyes Ministries, neilreyes.com is the best place to go. There's a prayer form on there if you have any type of prayer request that you need us to stand in agreement with you on. There's contact forms on there. And there's also our email subscription list. We want to invite you to connect with us. That's the best way to stay in contact with what's going on here at the ministry and what God is speaking to us on a regular basis. In addition to that, we're also on social media. We invite you to connect with us on there. We invite you to like us, subscribe to us, click the little bell, do all those things. And if these teachings are meaning something to you, we want to invite you to sign up to be a partner. Guys, as always, we want to remind you that Jesus is Lord and He loves you, and so do we. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and grow with us today. If you would like more information or would like to support or partner with Neil Reyes Ministries, please visit our website at neilreyes.com or you can mail us at Neil Reyes Ministries, P.O. Box 586, Fort Worth, Texas, 76052. Today's episode of Champions Walk was brought to you by the faithful partners and supporters of Neil Reyes Ministries who are joining us in our assignment of waking up the church, setting the captives free, and together reaching the lost.